Our brains evolved in a fasted state. For the majority of our history, the history that created the brains that we use today, fasting wasn't something that you forced yourself to do because everybody on Facebook's talking about it. It was something that nature forced you to do, like all the time. Whereas humans today pretty much eat from the time we wake up to the time that we go to sleep, our ancestors regularly went long periods between meals because of the unpredictability of their food supply. Now, I know for some people, what our ancestors had going on back in the day is like a big, so what? They also didn't have bleached lace wigs or phones with three cameras in it. So what, they fasted, big deal. But understanding the plight of our ancestors is important because the brains that we inherited from them were forged in this environment. And our brains are exquisitely adapted to perform their best in these conditions. In this brain snack, we'll see how oscillating between periods of feeding and fasting not only make you healthier, but can even make you smarter. Now the list of fasting benefits is long. In this brain snack, let's focus on how regularly restricting your calories for 16 hours or more can protect your brain. Well, for one, fasting decreases the likelihood that you'll suffer from neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease. Now I know that this is not gonna motivate you much because humans are notoriously bad for planning for the future. So for instance, when you think about your current self, a part of your brain called the medial prefrontal cortex lights up. When you think about people that you know, this region is also active, but to a much lesser degree. When you think about a stranger, this region may not even activate at all. Guess what? What happens when you think about yourself in old age? Exactly. Nothing. Zip. Nada. So I know fears of dementia probably won't have you in a salad bar anytime soon. But consider the fact that Alzheimer's is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States today. And that's growing. And that the symptoms of Alzheimer's can start as young as 30 years old. Skipping a few meals now means your kids may never have to find a nursing home to put you in in the future. On a similar note, fasting modulates the mitochondrial regulation of apoptosis. Okay, English. Apoptosis is when your cells commit suicide. Now, if it's a worn down cell or a cancerous cell, that's a great thing. But if it's a brain cell, terrible thing. Well, fasting regularly decreases the likelihood that your brain cells will kill themselves by increasing the efficiency of their mitochondria. Atrophy of brain regions is linked to everything from schizophrenia to depression. So consider protecting your peace by passing on that piece of chicken. Not only that, fasting lets us make new brain cells, thereby increasing our neuroplasticity. For a long time, scientists thought that adults couldn't even make brain cells. Like once you reach 25, like that's it. But we now know that intermittent fasting and exercise are two powerful ways to increase our brain volume, which enhances our cognitive abilities. Similarly, hormones released during fasting have been shown to improve memory, decision making, and performance on learning tests. This is a lack of food literally making you smarter and more responsive to your environment, which makes so much sense from an evolutionary perspective. When food was low, our ancestors had to be sharp and diligent in the pursuit of it, and they would have needed the kind of brains that turn up during tough times. Now, as I mentioned earlier, fasting is a powerful antidepressant, not only because it facilitates brain growth and inhibits atrophy of critical brain regions, but also because of a chemical called BDNF. Much of what I described in terms of brain growth and improved mental faculties is a result of this growth factor, which surges in your brain when you fast. BDNF is like miracle growth, like super fuel for our brains. There's a wide range of functions and benefits, one of those being reducing anxiety and depression. Medical research has revealed that its interaction with serotonin modulates our response to stressful stimuli and powerfully impacts our mood. Both chemicals are used to treat people diagnosed with depression, but now you know a way that you can make it on your own. Last but not least, fasting reduces inflammation. This one was one of my favorites because a large majority of the disease diseases that we suffer from today, brain diseases or otherwise, are largely inflammatory. Diseases caused by excess sugar or other havoc wreaking molecules that are floating around our bloodstream. Well, fasting improves insulin sensitivity. It makes it more likely that our body will use that sugar as fuel, as a tool and not a weapon. Now, there are a number of ways to incorporate fasting into your lifestyle. My recommendation is to start small, first by skipping breakfast and then graduating to skipping breakfast and lunch and then shooting for the entire day and then shooting for maybe once a month and then maybe once a week and then maybe Maybe every other day. The more you fast, honestly, the better. Just as long as you ensure you get the nutrients that you need when you're not fasting. If you found anything useful or interesting in this video, please like and comment and let me know what it is. Learn something I would love to know. If you think someone else will find it useful, share your snacks with them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at snack time.